why Ukraine could not stop the Russian offensive on Kharkiv, Spiegel named three reasons. The Russian army opened a new front in the Kharkiv region, and although the offensive was expected, it still turned out to be successful. The publication Der Spiegel analyzed the reasons why Ukraine failed to prevent the advance of the Russian Federation. As the publication notes, the element of surprise can be immediately excluded from the list of reasons since there have been warnings about the attack for a long time. Moreover, the Ukrainian intelligence previously stated that the attack began according to a known schedule about which all necessary authorities were informed. According to military expert Gustav Gressel, from the European Council on Foreign Relations, no later than May the 4th, six days before the Russian offensive began, it was clear that an attack was imminent, writes De Spiegel. The publication notes that three points were decisive in this situation. The first is the shortage of weapons. The prerequisite for Russian success was that the army was able to unhinderedly concentrate troops in the border zone. At the same time, the publication notes that one of the reasons why Ukraine was unable to prevent the deployment of the Russian armed forces was the United States ban on the use of weapons supplied by them on Russian territory. With American HIMARS missile launchers, the Ukrainians could stop the enemy before an attack begins. But since the Russians were stationed outside Ukrainian territory, they were safe. Spiegel emphasizes. The second mistake, writes Spiegel, was the problem with the defense lines. It is noted that three lines of defense were to be built along the entire 2,000-kilometer front. According to the government, about 800 million euros have been allocated for these purposes. Only in April, President Zelensky inspected the construction of defensive structures in the Kharkov region. But Ukrainian officer Denis Yaroslavsky from the city of Volchansk said in a post on the social network Facebook, the first line of defense and there weren't even mines, the publication writes. And although the head of the region, Oleg Sinegubov, has already asked the subcontractors involved in the construction of defense facilities to clarify the situation, however, as Spiegel writes, this applies only to the third line of defense which was built by civilian companies and which the Russians have not yet reached. Front lines, on the contrary, are built by engineering troops or completely ordinary units. As a military official explained, the first line is located at a distance of 1.5 to 5 or 6 kilometers from the border, so concreting is out of the question. There are also not enough mines to protect the borders. However, in some cases, even the simplest installations are lacking at the border, the publication writes. Thus, military blogger Yuri Butusov wrote from Volchansk, that he saw no trenches or shelters there, although the city is located five kilometers from the Russian border. And the third factor of failure for Ukraine was the lack of troops. The Ukrainians have enough soldiers to man the front line of defense. However, unlike the Russians, they lack units that could be placed behind them. Therefore, gaps in the defense are more difficult to close, military expert Franz Stefan Gadi said in an interview with Spiegel. NATO countries may use their air defense systems to shoot down Russian missiles. NATO Secretary General in 2009 to 2014, Anders Fogg Rasmussen, said that the alliance countries could use air defense systems located in Eastern Europe to shoot down Russian missiles and drones aimed at Ukraine. He said this in an interview with the British publication iPaper. Rasmussen said interceptor missiles from neighboring NATO countries such as Poland and Romania could shoot down Russian airstrikes that target Ukraine. Earlier this year, some NATO members, namely the US, UK and France, are known to have deployed fighter jets to help Israel's air defenses intercept Iranian drones and missiles. Rasmussen noted that the military alliance could do the same thing to help Ukraine shoot down Russian air targets that are approaching. He suggested that NATO air and missile defense systems could be combined with Ukrainian ones. According to the former NATO Secretary General, such efforts would protect Ukraine much more effectively by protecting its defense industry and jump-starting recovery, in return avoiding NATO troops being sent into the country. Recall, as of March 2024, Ukraine's partners provided almost $118 billion in direct military assistance, including air defense systems, namely the American ATACMS air defense systems, which were used by Ukraine with devastating effect. Despite this, according to the Wall Street Journal, the rate of interception of air targets by Ukrainian air defense fell from 46% over the past six months to 30% last month. Earlier, Politico journalists reported that Ukraine is putting pressure on the Joe Biden administration so that the United States allows the use of American weapons to strike Russia. The main problem now is that the White House policy limits our ability to strike military targets inside Russia, said the head of the Servant of the People, David Arakamia. 
In turn, the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Andriy Ermak, said that Ukraine offers a clear time frame for joining NATO. According to him, a date no later than July 2028 is being discussed.